What's going on guys, Vexy back, and today we have a brand new video on Bitcoin because it is freaking out everybody. Market sentiment has been flying all over the place. A few days ago when the price was up, everyone was happy. We were all going to make it, and right now the price is down. Everyone's saying it is crashing and burning, but that's to be expected. Before we jump into that though, if you're not subscribed, make sure to smash that sub button because we're on the road to 1,000 subscribers but let's see what's actually going on with bitcoin and if there's things to really be worried about so we can see right here on this hash rate we always gotta look at the bitcoin hash rate it's just been for whatever reason a amazing short-term indicator and we see the rally to an all-time high in hash rate to a big drawdown to another kind of rally up to here to this hash rate we'll see how it interacts there uh see what happens if there's another big drawdown or whatnot but I actually made something where we can take a look. I just put it together in Photoshop really quickly. We can just take a look at the green line is the price of Bitcoin and the blue line, obviously the hash rate we're just looking at. You can see how it's kind of this leading indicator. We see this big move down, big move down in price, and then even more, another giant move down. This is all the FUD started here with like the China kicking out the miners, Elon FUD, everything that could have hit the fan did right there and we saw this huge crash the price dropped and kind of stagnated here for the summer as the hash rate continued to recover and eventually the hash rate continued going up and the price started skyrocketing and following the hash rate this is when the hash rate really started to be a good short-term indicator is this long journey up here so we see obviously a, a move up here move up here and then this move down, obviously a little choppier, same thing here. And then the hash rate continued grinding up. The price shot up, got a little overheated, came back down. And then this area right here is where we currently are with this uh, dip to a run up here. And right here, the hash rate kind of followed the price. The price ran to new all-time highs, and then the hash rate did. Then we see, obviously, the hash rate turned right around as the price was continuing moving down. But now we have this decoupling the hash rate going up with the price kind of stagnating going down kind of trading sideways so uh we'll see if this continues to show like short term indicator if it does we should see another move up in the price of bitcoin uh but who really knows but the hash rate is a fundamental for bitcoin it's something that isn't you know it is how healthy the network is miners coming together the network security all this stuff so it's ultimately good to see it grinding upwards even if the price isn't because at some point the price will have to reflect how strong the network is getting and it will follow that and follow the fundamentals so and another thing we got to look at is the futures market and the perpetual futures market in particular because you get those funding rates and you can kind of uh, see which direction a squeeze might happen in so right now these are the futures markets so we can see how much long they are how much short they are and green means there's more long than there are shorts red if it's highlighted obviously means more shorts than there are longs on that platform so you can see it's pretty even uh you know round slightly over if it's favoring one to the other it's not like uh right here we have 53 percent, but it's only 266 million nothing compared to like 1.7 billion for fdx or 6 billion for finance so we're seeing a lot more red here, a lot more shorting going on. The shorts are going much uh, more aggressive than the longs right now, kind of taking over. So if we look into the funding rates, we can see that it's kind of mixed right now. You see a negative on OKEX or uh, USD or USDT margin or Bitcoin token margin means Bitcoin is used as their collateral. So we see negative for OKEX for both, a projected negative for BitMEX, and kind of slightly uh, mixed funding. So we could see it kind of go either way. It's not really uh, showing exactly what's going to happen, but we do see mixed funding, and then we see even projected to get rid of this negative. So that would mean people are a lot more bullish, piling into longs. Maybe we'll see that flip after, but... For right now, we have the shorts taking over, and we can see that obviously with liquidations because yet again we have a spike in liquidations the last two days, 423 million 
uh, yesterday or two days ago, and then yesterday was 154 million. So well over half a billion dollars liquidated in longs from Bitcoin. It's not what we want to see, but uh, we've just we've seen the longs, and, and the problem right now is that the longs and people who are leveraged traders want to uh, buy the dip on leverage so that they can make so much more money, and they get greedy and they get flushed out. So. This is what's going to happen for a while until they run out of money, to be fair, to be real. So I don't think uh, we're out of the woods. I mean, looking at this chart, like we can see there hasn't been a period but besides like back back here, maybe where it's been slow and where like liquidations were low. We've had massive liquidation since October 26. There's just been massive followed by little bits and another massive, massive stuff happening. 3 billion or 1.5 billion in a day and then we've we've just been liquidated because people are getting so greedy in this leverage market that they are costing everybody else i mean i wish they would just buy spot and hold bitcoin but obviously that's too easy you got to go 100x on your hundred dollars and lose the hundred dollars and i don't know why why people continue to do this obviously they're a little money hungry and until we finally flush all of these greedy leverage traders out it's gonna be very difficult to continue going higher and you see will clemente he's a, a pretty good analyst on twitter for bitcoin stuff he uh he has great analyst analytics for a, a lot of things bitcoin so this is just kind of breaking down what's going on uh in this perp market the perpetual future what we just looked at so you see him saying they're buying the dip on leverage spot selling more aggressively than perps so these traders are currently getting flushed. People are buying the dip on leverage, and then the price goes down, and then they get liquidated. So uh, this is a good thing to know when price is going up, but funding is going down. So like this funding right here, when we see this funding going down, so going negative, or if we see it uh, moving down, like it doesn't have to go negative necessarily go down, but going lower than what it currently was, uh, that's when you end up getting favorable short squeeze. So that's when price is going up, funding is going down, means the shorts are in danger of getting liquidated uh, because they are piling in while the price is grinding up. So that's what happens. And then we see price going down, but funding going up for a long squeeze. That means the price goes down. The longs get liquidated because as these funding rates go up or go go up, but the price keeps grinding down, they're diving in with leverage and they are going to get flushed out because the price keeps grinding down and they are hopping in uh, on leverage and the rates are not favorable for them. So a lot of a lot of things to kind of go up with this derivatives market, which is why it's crazy that you know a futures ETF was approved before a spot ETF. It's so much more technical, but basically uh, the greed and leverage markets preventing Bitcoin from moving up right now. And then to end this video off, we can look at the Google trends here for the last year. So 2021 here, uh, we see January. This, so this would basically track retail interest. Uh, so not institutional interest or buying. So we see retail is very high in January, comes back in February, got this dip during April and March and then kind of going back up, but then goes back to big levels in May. And since May has just been dying off and kind of going nowhere. So the retail traders, retail buyers are not really in the market. They're not really here right now. Uh, and the big guys, the institutions are taking over. We can go back to Will Clemente yet again, posting some good charts here to show, you know, interest in Bitcoin, retail interest in Bitcoin is pretty much gone from the spring big boys the institutions running the show so these charts are transaction fees you can see just not much activity on the network uh and then transfer volume so zero to a thousand dollars you see it drop with price here and then kind of come back you see a thousand to ten thousand doing the same kind of pattern drop and kind of coming back but when you go to uh ten million dollars plus you see this drop but then massive, it is came back, spike, and then it's down right now, but starting to go up again. So the people with tons of money are the ones in the space right now 
pushing things forward, using the network, buying Bitcoin, selling Bitcoin, doing everything with it. So the retail guys, small guys, aren't really in the scene right now, and the big institution ones are, which makes sense because if we uh, go and we see that the price is down in December and stuff, as well as the stock market's kind of down in December, you get the tax loss harvesting stuff, you get locking in gains. So Bitcoin had a great year, so wouldn't be surprised funds or institutions to lock in gains to show people and show clients and then come back in January where they can buy back in and start the year fresh on a fresh profit and loss basis. So they're not going to be uh, locking it or not going to, they're going to lock in these great profits for the year and show that they did super well for 2021. And then they can come buy back in in 2022 and start that profit sheet over and kind of go from there. So I think that's what we're going to see. December being that month that institutions have always done with selling to lock in profits, tax loss harvest, all these things. And they're going to, we're going to look for them to come back in January next month in a few days here. See how the first couple of weeks of January go. That's going to do it for this video, guys. As always, remember to smash that like button and subscribe. We're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. See you guys in my next video.